Hi you guys, it's Amanda with Healthy House on the Block, a place where we talk about removing toxins from our home and creating an indoor environment that supports health, wellness, and improves um, our immune system function. This week we are going to talk about specifically scented candles and regular candles. Um, we're going to talk about why you can't just go to a store and purchase any old scented candle anymore, um, what we know about them, and what we can do to replace these things in our home because not all of us want to just throw a diffuser up. Sometimes it's really nice to have candles. Um, it sets an ambiance. It actually creates a very cozy feeling within our homes, which I am all about. Um, and so I want to take you through some options this week and how to purchase candles, what to look for, um, because even some of them that appear to be really healthy actually are not. Um, they're not as healthy as you would think. Soy candles we really shouldn't be burning in our home a lot of times. This is kind of touted as like a really healthy option and um, I'm here to tell you I think there are better options out there. So I'm going to help you guys find those. We're going to go through some slides together and what it does is it breaks down this week's blog post where I'm talking about all of these things and I'm talking about how to create a healthy home that feels good, that smells good too. It doesn't have to be a sterile environment. So let's go through the slides. We'll talk about what we want to avoid in candles and why we shouldn't be burning them in our homes, especially if we have kids. And then I'm going to walk you through some alternatives. We're also going to talk about freshening the air in other ways. Um, so if you're not a candle person or you want to just ditch candles altogether, there are ways that you can um, freshen a room without any of those things. So let's go. All right, so let's take a look at some non-toxic scented candles and um, talk about the toxins that are in most candles that we buy. Um, so first, let's remember like what makes these candles so harmful to have in your home? I think you have to remember that the act of burning scented candles means that any toxin in the candle is kind of getting a fast track into the air inside your home. Um, this is why it's even some candles that like appear to be safer are actually not um, any better than standard candles. And I have a study linked for you in this week's blog post um, kind of talking about that. So the first thing we want to avoid is paraffin wax. It is the most common material that candles are made of. Um, this type of wax is made from a chem like a chemically bleached petroleum waste product, which we know pollutes our indoor air. It's also a known carcinogen. Um, Paraffin wax also, um, when burned, releases another dangerous chemical into the air, which is toluene. Um, toluene has been shown to negatively affect the central nervous system as well as the neurological system in our bodies. And I have links in this week's blog post um, for you guys. Benzene is another chemical that is often um, emitted when paraffin wax, um, sorry about that, uh, paraffin wax is is in candles. Benzene is a natural gas and crude oil element that is used as a solvent. However, it's very toxic to our bodies and it's been also known to cause cancer. Um, so let's take a look at the next toxin, which is synthetic fragrance. I feel like I talk about this on a daily basis, um, but it's good. It's for good reason. Synthetic fragrances are truly everywhere and they're filled with chemical toxins that we really don't need to be exposing our bodies to. Um, synthetic fragrances are filled with phthalates, which is a hormone disruptor, um, petrochemicals, which causes birth defects, nervous system disorder, allergies, and cancer, as well as VOCs that quickly enter our indoor air. Um, when candles are burned, the synthetic fragrances enter there quickly and oftentimes stay around for long periods of time. The manufacturers add these chemicals to fragrances to make them last as long as possible in the air, which means um, you're exposed to it for a long period of time. The next thing we want to watch for are metal core wicks. So um, some candles contain wicks that have a metal core and a lot of times it contains lead or zinc. A study that was done in Michigan actually showed that burning a candle for just two hours can result in airborne lead concentrations that are dangerous to the human body. Um, and what's even more is that the lead in the candle fumes deposited on the floor walls and furniture um, of homes and children who have poor hand-to-mouth habits were exposed to um, large amounts of lead from candles. 
We also want to watch out for dyes. Um, many synthetic dyes contain dangerous chemicals such as naphtha and naphthalene. Um, these two chemicals are possible carcinogen, but um, also cause issues with the gastrointestinal system as well as neurological um, degeneration. And I have um, links for you guys on these studies. And again, because these toxins are in a candle that is burned, the toxins enter our air and can deposit on surfaces. And of course, infants and children are going to be the most susceptible here. And then finally, soy candles. Um, because soy is a genetically modified material, you can bet that it's not going to be the best option for your home um, because they're genetically modified. They're often sprayed with toxic pesticides during growth. And most soy candles also still contain small amounts of paraffin wax, which when burned enters our air and our surfaces. Um, so let's talk about what ingredients we do want to look for. The first is... Um, I, we want to look for like a beeswax candle. This is my top option for a candle. Um, it's not only toxin free, but it also, um, the material can also positively support your environment at home. Beeswax, uh, releases negative ions into the air, kind of the same way like an air purifier would. And typically common allergens and pollutants have a, ne a positive charge. So when the negative ion is released, it binds to the positive ion and it's either burned by the candle and fall or like falls to the ground, which is, um, then you can vacuum it up or dust it up. Unfortunately, there's really no like formal studies done on this. So it's hard to say like how much this actually benefits there, but we do know that it's not contributing to the problem. Um, and so if you want to try and find like an organic beeswax with no GMOs, that's probably best. Um, also look for a cotton wick. So 100% cotton wick is best when it comes to candles. If you can confirm that it's organic cotton, that means it's free of pesticides and that's an even better option. Um, for fragrance, we want to make sure that it's 100% pure essential oil. Um, it can be tricky to verify because there can be some deceiving terms that are used um, that may infer the candle uses a natural scent and fragrance, but it really is just using um, synthetic fragrances to smell like organic um, essential oils. And then finally, look for certified organic. You can find USDA certified organic candles once you start looking. Um, you know, if it's a handmade artisan candle, you won't be able to find that, but you can verify with the artisan um, the products that they use. And then let's look at some other ways to freshen our home. So we don't always need a candle. Um, a really good option would be essential oils. Um, this is my top and favorite way to add fragrance to my home is with a diffuser. Um, you can purchase just a few essential oils to make a number of different fragrance blends at home. I use plant therapy um, for my essential oils. They have um, an inexpensive line of USDA certified organic essential oils. Um, and I know they're pesticide free and they're not adding toxins to my indoor air. Another option would be to create a room freshening spray with um, these oils. So you would use a four ounce milliliter glass spray bottle, one tablespoon of witch hazel. Um, I use distilled water, so you use a half cup. It keeps the um, spray fresh longer. And then about 30 drops of essential oil. And these are some of the blends that I'm going to share with you. They're also on my blog post. So if you want to print these out or copy them down, that's a great option. Um, so this one uses bergamot, clary, sage, and lavender. And then we've got a nice warm vanilla one. One, which is sandalwood, vanilla, grapefruit, and bergamot. Uh, clean citrus, which is grapefruit, lime, lemon, and bergamot. And then this floral one is my kid's favorite. It is geranium, grapefruit, and ylang ylang. And then the last one is perfect for fall. It's sweet orange, cinnamon, and clove. And those are some good options to freshen a room. Okay, so another thing we can do to reduce um, odors in our house, so this would be like instead of masking odors, um, you would use this to just kind of get rid of odors. Um, and it's these charcoal bags. Um, you can recharge them in the sun and you can um, reuse them over and over again. Um, I love them for areas like diaper pails, um, shoe closets, pantries, um, clothes closets, wherever you have things that are a little bit um, stinky. I think it's going to be a great option. Um, and then another way you can freshen your house without the use of a scented candle is some stovetop potpourri. So, um, 
over the winter, our neighbor sent us this adorable little jar. It had like cranberries, dried oranges, pine sprigs, cinnamon sticks, and cloves in it. And she had little instructions on um, how to put it on your stove and um, it'll make your house smell amazing. It did. It was absolutely amazing. It was such a great thing to use at our house um, instead of a candle. And it really worked to make the house smell amazing. And here's some ideas for um, things you can put in your stovetop potpourri. And then the last thing is to look at um, getting an air purifier. I love Medify Air. Um, it's a medical grade air purifier. I have it linked in this week's blog post. It cleans the indoor air, but it also has an ionizing option to remove odors from the air as well. So the ionizing process works where the negative ions produced by the air purifier kind of like grab the positive ions. Um, and most toxins and allergens are uh, these positive ions. And then what it does is it causes the ions to kind of fall to the ground where they can be like vacuumed up um, rather than breathed into our lungs. So it's a really great option if you can find an air purifier um, like this one. All right, so now that we know what not to use, what to look for, here are my picks for some of the better um, brands for healthy scented candles. These are some handmade shops. I have every single one linked in this week's blog post. A lot of them are on Etsy. There's a couple that actually sell on Amazon, um, but these are trustworthy. They use um, natural ingredients. And like I said, I've got actual candles on this week's blog post that you guys can take a look at. That's it, you guys. It's all you want to know about candles. Um, if you have any questions, want links to some of the candles that I talk about in the slides, you can find those in this week's blog post. You'll just scroll down this video, and at the bottom I have a link to this week's blog post that has um, links to studies that I mentioned. It has links to products that I mentioned. Um, it's also a great place where you can ask questions. Um, if you have them, you can also leave a question here. Uh, I would love to help you if you have um, anything that you're looking at specifically. Otherwise, I will see you guys next week, and until then, be well.